Imagine for a moment that your DNA carries the secrets of ancient survival, stories of migration, adaptation, and resilience stretching back thousands of years. What if the answer to some of humanity's greatest mysteries was locked inside the genes of people who walked this earth long before us? The Caribbean is often seen as a vibrant mix of cultures and histories, but beneath its beauty lies an untold story, a story that has been waiting to be uncovered through the power of genetic research. Who were the first people to settle these islands? How did they adapt to such isolated environments? And how did they survive the arrival of colonization, one of the most devastating chapters in history? Thanks to groundbreaking advances in DNA analysis, researchers are now piecing together the puzzle of the Caribbean's past. They've uncovered clues that reveal ancient migrations, the blending of cultures, and the strength of a people who refused to be forgotten. Today, we're diving deep into this remarkable journey. Get ready to uncover how Caribbean DNA doesn't just tell the story of survival, it tells the story of resilience, creativity, and an unbreakable connection to the past. Around 6,000 years ago, long before Europeans set foot in the Americas, the first settlers arrived in the Caribbean. Picture this, small groups of people in dugout canoes navigating uncharted waters, venturing from Central or South America. These were the pioneers of the Caribbean's archaic age, bringing with them stone tools, resilience, and a determination to survive. Their lifestyle was simple but resourceful. They fished along the coasts, hunted small game, and foraged for plants. While they cultivated small gardens, their primary tools were made of stone, essential for cutting, digging, and crafting weapons. Archaeological finds in Cuba and Belize hint that these early settlers may have come from Central America, but their exact origins remain a mystery. DNA evidence reveals that while they were more closely related to Central and South Americans than to North Americans, they don't match any specific group we know today. These early settlers had to adapt to life on islands, each with its unique challenges. From harsh tropical storms to unpredictable food sources, every day was a test of survival. Yet, they thrived. Slowly, they expanded eastward, creating a web of settlements that stretched across the Caribbean. Imagine the courage it took to venture into the unknown, to face the vast ocean with nothing but instinct and a hope for a better life. The Archaic Age wasn't just a time of survival. It was the foundation of the Caribbean story, a testament to human ingenuity and the will to endure. Fast forward to about 2,500 to 3,000 years ago, a time when the Caribbean experienced a wave of transformation. This was the beginning of the Ceramic Age, ushered in by a new group of settlers, likely Arawak-speaking farmers and potters from northeast South America. Unlike their predecessors, who relied on hunting and gathering, these newcomers brought with them agriculture, larger settlements, and the art of pottery. Using the waterways of the Orinoco River Basin as natural highways, they traveled from the South American mainland into the Caribbean Sea, hopping from island to island in the Lesser Antilles. These voyages settled first in Puerto Rico and then moved westward, reshaping the islands they touched. Their way of life was vastly different from the Archaic Age inhabitants. They cultivated crops like maize and sweet potatoes, which provided stable food sources and supported growing communities. Their pottery wasn't just functional, it was a reflection of their culture, adorned with intricate designs and symbols that likely held spiritual meaning. As their influence spread across the islands, the Ceramic Age settlers didn't just bring agriculture and pottery, they brought a new sense of community. Villages grew larger, social structures became more complex, and the islands became hubs of cultural and economic activity. But this wasn't just a time of progress, it was also a time of change. While the Archaic Age people had once dominated the Caribbean, their presence began to fade. The newcomers carried with them not just new tools and techniques, but a way of life that would define the region for centuries to come. The Ceramic Age was more than an era. It was the dawn of a new identity for the Caribbean, a legacy that still lives on today. As the Ceramic Age settlers spread across the Caribbean, they brought profound cultural and technological changes. But what happened to the people of the Archaic Age, who had lived on these islands for thousands of years? The answer lies in their DNA, and it reveals a surprising and poignant story. When geneticists analyzed ancient Caribbean remains, they discovered something remarkable. The two groups, Archaic and Ceramic, rarely mixed. Out of hundreds of individuals studied, only three showed evidence of intermarriage between the two populations. 
It's as if these groups existed side by side, yet remained socially and culturally distinct. Over time, nearly all traces of archaic age DNA disappeared from the islands. The ceramic age settlers and their descendants became the dominant population, leaving the archaic age people as a faint echo of the past. One exception was a small community in western Cuba, where archaic age people managed to persist until European arrival. This holdout was a testament to their resilience, even as their presence across the rest of the region faded. The reasons for this genetic divide remain a mystery. Did the two groups have little opportunity to interact, or did cultural differences create barriers between them? What we do know is that the ceramic age settlers' advanced agricultural practices and growing communities likely overwhelmed the smaller, more isolated archaic populations. It's a sobering reminder of how cultures can be eclipsed by waves of change. But while the genetics of the archaic age people largely vanished, their survival for thousands of years laid the foundation for the Caribbean as we know it, a legacy written in the very lands they once called home. During the ceramic age, the Caribbean became a canvas for extraordinary creativity. Over a span of 2,000 years, pottery styles on the islands underwent dramatic changes. Bold red vessels adorned with white-painted designs gave way to simpler, buff-colored pots. Other pieces were marked with intricate dots and incisions, while some bore sculpted animal faces that doubled as handles. These transformations were more than aesthetic. They reflected a cultural evolution across generations. For a long time, archaeologists believed these changes in pottery styles were tied to new migrations from the mainland, waves of new people bringing their own traditions to the islands. But genetic evidence tells a different story. Despite the striking shifts in style, the DNA of the people remained consistent. The same communities that arrived 2,500 to 3,000 years ago were the ones innovating these artistic styles. This discovery highlights the creativity of the Caribbean's ancient inhabitants. They didn't need outside influences to inspire change. Instead, they shared ideas across islands, developing new techniques and designs while staying connected through trade and social networks. It's a powerful reminder that cultural progress isn't always tied to the movement of people. These were dynamic, interconnected societies, thriving on collaboration and ingenuity. Their pottery wasn't just functional. It was a form of expression, a way to reflect their identity and creativity. What's truly remarkable is how these innovations happened in a region defined by its geographic isolation. Every island had its own challenges, but through shared ideas, the people of the ceramic age built a cultural legacy that transcended boundaries. It's not just a story of pots. It's a story of people who saw art, utility, and community as inseparable threads of their identity. Although the Caribbean islands are separated by vast stretches of water, ancient DNA reveals they were anything but isolated. These islands formed a dynamic web of connections, where people, ideas, and goods traveled freely. This wasn't just a collection of small, scattered communities. It was a thriving network tied together by the sea. Genetic analysis uncovered an astonishing fact. People on different islands often shared close family ties. Researchers found 19 pairs of genetic cousins scattered across the region. In one case, a man buried in the Bahamas was genetically related to someone over 600 miles away in the Dominican Republic. These findings suggest that people traveled frequently between islands, maintaining family bonds and cultural ties despite the challenges of crossing the ocean. Imagine navigating those waters in dugout canoes, using the stars, currents, and winds to guide you. To these early Caribbean inhabitants, the sea wasn't a barrier. It was a highway, connecting communities across vast distances. This network allowed ideas to spread quickly, from pottery designs to agricultural techniques, creating a shared cultural identity across the islands. The interconnectedness of the region becomes even more remarkable when you consider its small population size. Genetic studies estimate that only 10,000 to 50,000 people lived on the largest islands, Hispaniola and Puerto Rico before European arrival. This close-knit environment made relationships between islands even more crucial, fostering cooperation and collaboration across the Caribbean. These ancient seafarers remind us that human connection has always transcended physical boundaries. Their voyages, their networks, and their shared innovations built the foundation of a Caribbean identity that endures to this day. The arrival of Europeans in the late 15th century marked one of the darkest chapters in Caribbean history. For thousands of years, the indigenous peoples of the Caribbean had thrived, 
building vibrant communities and interconnected networks across the islands. But with colonization came devastating changes, disease, enslavement, and cultural destruction on an unimaginable scale. When Christopher Columbus arrived, he exaggerated the population of the islands, claiming millions of people lived there. Historical accounts from figures like Bartolomé de las Casas later estimated the pre-contact population at around 3 million. But modern genetic research reveals a much smaller number, likely between 10,000 and 50,000 people on the largest islands of Hispaniola and Puerto Rico. Despite this lower estimate, the impact of colonization was catastrophic. Entire communities were decimated by European diseases to which they had no immunity and the brutal system of forced labor further eroded their populations. The loss of life was so profound that it is now recognized as one of the world's first genocides, a systematic effort to erase an entire people and their culture. But even in the face of such devastation, the story of survival persisted. While the cultural practices of the indigenous Caribbean people were systematically erased, their DNA survived. Genetic studies show that the ceramic age settlers passed down their genes to modern populations, blending with European colonizers and enslaved Africans who were brought to the islands. Today, their legacy lives on in the very fabric of the Caribbean's diverse communities. This part of history is a sobering reminder of the resilience of the human spirit. Despite the horrors of colonization, the genes of the Caribbean's original inhabitants have endured, a silent testament to their survival and their lasting impact on the region's identity. Today, the story of the Caribbean's first inhabitants isn't just preserved in history books or archaeological sites. It lives on in the DNA of millions of people across the region. Genetic studies have revealed that indigenous ancestry is still very much a part of modern Caribbean populations. In Puerto Rico, about 14% of the average person's DNA can be traced back to the ceramic age settlers. In the Dominican Republic, that figure is 6%, and in Cuba, around 4%. These numbers challenge the long-held myth that the indigenous peoples of the Caribbean were completely wiped out during colonization. Instead, they show that while their cultures faced immense destruction, their genes survived, blending with those of European settlers and enslaved Africans. This mix created the uniquely diverse populations we see in the Caribbean today. But it's not just the DNA that has endured. Elements of their language, traditions, and identity remain woven into Caribbean culture. Take the word hurricane, for example. It originates from the Taino word hurakan, which referred to their storm god. This single word is a powerful reminder of the enduring legacy of the Caribbean's original inhabitants. Beyond language, many Caribbean people today are reconnecting with their indigenous roots. Communities are rediscovering their ancestral traditions and celebrating the resilience of their ancestors. Tools like genealogical DNA testing have made it easier for individuals to trace their connections to these ancient settlers, bridging the gap between past and present. This legacy is a story of survival, not just of a people, but of a culture and identity that refused to disappear. Every trace of indigenous DNA in today's Caribbean populations is a testament to the resilience and strength of those who came before, ensuring their story lives on in the most profound way possible, through the people of the present. The story of the Caribbean is one of extraordinary survival. It's a story written in the genes of millions of people living today, each carrying a legacy that stretches back thousands of years. From the first brave settlers who crossed treacherous seas during the Archaic Age, to the innovative farmers and potters of the Ceramic Age, to those who endured the devastation of colonization, every chapter is a testament to resilience. Caribbean DNA is more than just a scientific discovery. It's a time capsule preserving the journeys, struggles, and triumphs of the region's earliest inhabitants. It reminds us that despite the forces of erasure, disease, enslavement, and cultural destruction, human connection and identity endure. As we unravel the genetic stories of the past, we gain a deeper understanding of what it means to survive. The creativity, adaptability, and determination of these ancient communities shaped the Caribbean as we know it today. Their influence isn't just found in the island's vibrant cultures, but also within the very people who walk those shores. So, as we reflect on this incredible story, let's celebrate the resilience of the human spirit and the enduring power of heritage. If you've ever wondered about your own DNA and the stories it holds, this is your chance to explore, reconnect, and honor those who came before us. The Caribbean story is not just about survival, it's about thriving, 
adapting, and leaving an indelible mark on history. And that's a legacy worth remembering.